guys, this is Alex Macy Equipment and we are here in sunny Orlando, Florida for the 2020 American Rental Association Rental Show. And inside you're going to get a glimpse of what's available to you through AC Equipment. Let's go inside. Let's check it out. Come on. We're here today with Mike Case from Bartel Global, and this is a, a concrete scarifier. 200 N concrete scarifier. What does this do, Mike? What's the purpose of this? Well, Bartel. First, let me tell you a little bit about Bartel Global. Bartel Global goes anywhere from finishing and placing concrete all the way to floor prep. So, knowing what you're doing and what kind of profile you need for a floor, and the guys will use a scarifier anytime they need to profile, they can remove or they can grind with it. This here would be um, used for customers doing overlayments, underlayments, and also removing paint, um, paint lines and asphalt. So, or now some, would I use something like this for sidewalks that are uneven to, to, to shave them down to make them even? Yes, very common for um, unleveled uh, concrete sidewalks because it's quick and it's easy. Basically, if the black part of this carpet was the high side and the red side was the low side, it's very easy to take a scarifier, turn it on, and work from high to low, just like this. And actually, if it was about an eighth of an inch uh, off right there, we would be done with it right about now. And it would be smooth and it would, level. Yes, it, will, it, will, it wouldn't be smooth, there'd be a key to it, but you can simply get it, uh, an overlayment to put over, and like, it wouldn't like a, match. Like a thin set. Like a thin set on top. Okay. So if you look under here, these are carbide cutters, and the way a scarifier works is that these rings sit into a shaft. And as the shaft spins around, the, the cutters flail. So they actually hammer the concrete. So this will spin. As it goes, it will flail. This loose here, the loose is on purpose. And as it flails around, it will hit the concrete, break up the concrete. It would go up into a vacuum port in the back. And then the, uh, well, this scarifier is hooked up to a, a vacuum. All the vacuum will pick up all the concrete silica dust. So now with all the silica laws, what, the, what they want to do is they want to have 100% containment, right? To have 100% containment, you need a HEPA filter vacuum. And the way the HEPA filter vacuum works is that there's a HEPA filter in the back, and depending on what you're doing, um, with with scarifiers and some grinders, what you're doing is just picking up the pieces. It's not really catching the, the concrete like you would in a grinder. You wouldn't have the same kind of dust plume, but it would be dusty, very dusty. So you would hook up your vacuum just like you would think you would. You'd go into this vac, into the HEPA filter, and then no, no silica can escape it. When you're so this could be used inside and there would be no dust. Perfectly, yes, exactly. First thing that you would use it inside, of course you could use it outside. Um, even if you're outside, you're not allowed to uh, let silica just go out with the air. This is what we call a long hole bag. It's similar to, I use the metaphor of a diaper genie. What you, what you would do is the, the concrete and silica dust would fall into this bag and then you would you would let it fill to you got to where you where you're comfortable lifting it, right? And then you would tie it, twist it, tie a knot, just like an umbilical cord of a baby. You would cut the center of it. And now you'd be 100% dust free and or, you can go out. Or like stuffing sausage. Like stuffing sausage, right. <laughs> a Polish kibasi. A Polish kibasi, actually. Uh, this machine here has another feature which is very good. Uh, you can set this right here to, uh, your, this, to the depth that you want. And really, an eighth of an inch is what you're looking for. You don't really want to go more than an eighth of an inch. And the reason is, is you want to save your bearings on the machine. Yeah, you, you so, start trying to chip away more that's than right. that. If you, gonna... if you chip away more than you chew, can chew, I mean, the machine will work, but you'll put pressure on the bearings, and the bearings will wear out uh, prematurely. And uh, no manufacturer covers that under warranty. All right, so you set your, you set your depth, and then you're ready to go. Um, safety feature here. If you uh, let go for any reason, the machine will shut off. So it's an instant kill switch. And, all, and go back to the cutters. Depending on what you're doing, um, if you let us know what it is, uh, we could suggest what kind of cutters to use. And you can set up your cutters. This is an eight inch path machine, but you can set up with spacers if you're only doing four inches, if you're taking up epoxy. Um, one of the, um, the benefits, again, to the scarifier over a grinder, they do pretty much the same thing, but this will leave a key profile on the ground that would allow your overlayments to, to bite into it. So, it, so when you overlay, it's not a slick surface? 
so you don't trip or slip. Or, well, well, some guys can use this as, as, as for trip prevention too. They can, they can rough up the concrete, but mostly this would be for um, for for your uh, surface prep for your overlayments and other things. Now we just picked up one of these machines from Mike and. We will be actually delivering it to one of our customers next week and uh, stay tuned for a video on, on how it works. We're going to actually show you an infield video on, on the usage of it. We're here with Brian from Wacker and he's going to tell us about the battery operated jumping jack and fleet tamp. So the uh, battery powered jumping jack, we're going to start out here with just the model number on it. So it's an AS60E, stands for Oz a stomper, basically it's electric stomper. And that's in uh, uh, it's in German. German, right? Okay. Um, so that's electric stomper, electric rammer, 60 kilonewtons of force, and okay. he is for electric, right? Okay. So the battery fits on both the rammer and the plate itself. Um, batteries are all interchangeable, as you can tell. It comes off very simply. As so, okay. it's a uh, it's lithium ion. As you can tell, it can't tell you uh, how much battery it has on there much charging it has right here on top put it back on and off they're basically the same setup on both they both just sit in here push forward so if you that's fueled easy. it up that's yeah. how you fuel it up that's it. Quick. All, all right, right. yeah um, second thing is that these are 100% maintenance free the only no, thing you, no, yeah, oil, no oil no checking the gas none of that the only thing you have to do is well, change well, out the change out the oil in the boot, in the boot. that's what I mean. right um, to run these are all the same. They all run exactly the same. They all turn on exactly the same. There's a dead man switch, as you can tell here. Okay. Up, forward. That's how you turn it on. Now to make the battery run, it's very simple. Power it on, let it hit. Go ahead and grab that in. Turn it on, dead man up, push it forward. Same exact thing, it hits just like a WP-1550 does. It does come with the water tank or without the water tank. Okay. So now, there's no separate exciter. The exciter's right here on front. If, right with, with the motor. That's right. It's all one sealed unit. It's all one sealed unit. Okay. And on the rammer itself, it's the same exact concept. We'll run this one over here, just so you can see how it runs. Um, it turns off and on just like a standard rammer does, just like that one did. Okay. Battery sits right on top. Forward. All right. So turn it on again. Have battery on. There we go. There we go. Dead man switch. our BS50, which is our standard rammer. Yeah. What's, what's the weight compared to the BS50? Uh, they weigh basically exactly the same. They're right in the same category, okay. 156 pounds. Now, can I, this battery's going to change with the bolt system, so all four. Can I buy without batteries, with batteries, Correct. with charges? you can buy all the cards, or you can buy a full package. Okay. Or you can buy the, the rammer, the batteries, and the charger. The charger's down here. What's the charge time? Uh, 80 minutes. 80 minutes for a full, for a full charge of the battery itself. So, runtime on the plate itself is 60 minutes. On the rammer itself is 30. 30. So, if you got a day's worth of work, you're uh, going to go some batteries. So. Yeah, but typically on a, on a rammer itself, you're never going to be running a rammer over 30 minutes of time. If you're running a rammer over 30 minutes of time, you want to probably want to start looking at like a church roll. Because you have a, that's a lot of work. We're in Jersey and 
is the strongest permanent magnet solution that really exists in the world for picking up ferrous metal debris off of all the surfaces that we live on. In this configuration here, it comes standard with fork pockets and it's hydraulically actuated permanent magnet. So it's not a traditional electromagnet that would require electricity coming from an external power source like a generator that's either gasoline or diesel powered. We simplified it by putting a very strong permanent magnet inside of this enclosure. What I'm going to do is hydraulically lift that permanent magnet from facing downward to upward and then back down and that turns the magnet on and off. So underneath here I've got a quite a bit of debris, it's ferrous metal. Uh, this is on the shoulder of highways, this is in construction sites or landfills, uh, construction areas where we're cleaning up after demolitions. The magnet goes wow. down, faces the product, attracts it to it inside of the housing. You're in an application with a skid steer on the back of this. You can lift this up now and get over top of a bin and cycle it off to get the product to dump into the location of where you want it to be. That's awesome. That's great. We talked about a couple things. Forks. It fits on the back of an SSL bracket uh, for a skid steer mount. People that have bought traditional tow behind electromagnets can buy a trailer kit that bolts these wheels, fenders with wheels onto the sides of the unit. And then we've got a tongue assembly that slides into the fork pockets, making it a great tow behind for applications behind pickup trucks where they're trying to get debris off the roadways. We also have a municipal truck mount. This bracket would bolt to the back of the system, and it would now allow you to take a snow plow truck, county municipal truck that's got the plow horns on the front, simply mount this on, and the operator driving that vehicle can maintain shoulders at a speed of up to 10 miles an hour, getting all the debris up off the shoulder of the highway. Thanks for watching part one of our review of the 2020 rental show. Tune into part two where we'll do interviews with Lincoln welders, Honda engines, Weber compaction, and more. Thanks.